next week on the Glass Cannon Podcast. We're, we're in a bit of a pickle here because you actually could permanently die. Yeah, I didn't realize this. You get a 90% chance of not dying this turn. Right. Yeah. And then it's, and it's a, and you have a 45% <laughs> chance of stabilizing. You roll a one or a two, you die. <laughs> Oh no, I just, I could see it. No, no! What did you no. roll? What did you roll? No! no. Oh. It's a one! Oh, oh my god! No. We need to start thinking about arrangements. Oh. <laughs> it's episode 15, and that's our first character death. There were 20 options. Two of them would kill you, and you rolled a one. Lucky, 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 please! She looks up at Bolon. You may have slowed our progress, but the obnubulate curse will return. Do you believe in justice? Oh, yes. And it will be served. Yes. On that, we agree. And is going to run him through with her rapier. <gasps> oh, yeah! Yeah! The adventure continues. You will deserve everything coming to you. No. to the Glass Cannon Podcast. New year, new you, right, Sid? I'm popping a little popper. New new year, <laughs> new character. There it is. New hair. <laughs> new hair. Did you have that last week? You don't yes. notice anything. Yes. 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 Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's messed up. You sure? Yeah. You know, you know what's a good rule of thumb for that kind of thing when you're not sure? Uh -huh. don't, don't say anything. Don't say it. <laughs> Did you do anything to your hair? You're the type where someone would change their hair and they're, you're like, new glasses. Is that it? Something's different about you. Nailed it. Did you yeah. change your shirt? Yes. <laughs> Last time I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are, uh, we're deep in winter in the fictitious time within which we're pretending it is. <laughs> and uh, let me ask you guys, well, let me say something and then hear what you think. Gosh. You got your summer Olympics, which are coming out this year. Uh, they're going to be in Paris. Very nice. Uh, then you get your Winter Olympics, which will be back in a couple of years. I prefer winter sports, but I enjoy watching the Summer Olympics more. Your thoughts? Okay. I like the Winter Olympics. Yeah? yeah. You like watching them more than the Summer Olympics? Um, I don't think I differentiate the two like that. I need that. you to choose a favorite. The winter, but because I think I like the sports. You said the opposite. You're like, I like the sports better in the winter, but you like You're watching. You're very confusing the way yeah. you said I it. like the sports of the, the winter sports better. The, the ski and the snowboard and the hockey. Right, it's more fun. But I prefer watching the Summer Olympics. So you prefer those sports more? No, I just uh, enjoy watching those sports more. Yeah, I enjoy okay. playing the winter sports. You enjoy oh, you're participating in the Winter Olympics? <laughs> I didn't know you were getting around athlete. to. I, uh, <laughs> I've been asked to join. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Joe asked you a very specific question. You enjoy half piping is the words he said. Yes, so. I do. I'm an alternate. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say I exactly made the Big game. half pipe guy. <laughs> I don't want to overstate when I say I'm an alternate. Half pipe's a bit too much. 
quarter pipe for me. <laughs> I went into a half pipe. Well, I've never skied. I've only snowboarded. And I went to a half pipe once, um, foolishly. I think I'd been drinking. And uh, I got in there and I was like, oh God, what did I do? Oh, I just went right down the middle of the half pipe. <laughs> so you did I didn't want to go. go. Up and down. I was like, oh. <laughs> not ready for that half I could see myself having the exact same reaction. If I ended up inside of, of a half pipe, I'd be like, why? What am I doing here? Like, <laughs> terrifying. For some reason, I thought I would just drop in and go right to the other side and start catching air like Sean White. And I just went, oh, oh. They make it look so easy. <laughs> they really do. Half pipes are hard. Yeah. They're not easy. Everything's hard about skiing and snowboarding. Yeah. It's, it's a difficult thing. It's, I love snowboarding. I think that's why I like the Winter Olympics. We're going to take the the kids to to learn how to, we'll let them choose if they want to snowboard or ski this year. Um, and that should be fun. And I'll get back up for the first time in eight years. So I'll, I'm going to miss you guys. Just after, <laughs> at your age, just after surgery. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So I'll be, I have a couple months removed. You're so uh, brave. <laughs> yeah, that should be uh, that should be fun. You guys, do you enjoy a winter sports kid? Do you like uh, building a snowman? Uh, That's a sport. Time to time? Yeah, Olympic sport actually. Yeah. yeah, they should. They added a bunch to the summer. I'm sure they'll add snowboard uh, snowman making to the next. It's winter. really only one winter Olympic sport that I like, and it's the biathlon. Because like give you a gun. I think there's more sports <laughs> would be improved if they let you have a gun for at least part of it. Yeah. <laughs> you shoot your opponent. It really seems yeah. unsafe. It's yeah. a hilarious water sport. polo with pistols. Yeah, yeah. So, it's the. <laughs> it's I wild. mean, it's the plot of a James Bond movie where there's a where one of the vill one of the henchmen is a bi yeah. biathlete. I bet you they don't oh, let yeah. Ireland compete. Because <laughs> if they get mad, if they lose, they just bah, bah, bah. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the seventh time we've had an O'Brien kill a member of the Kenya squad. <laughs> and then he claimed diplomatic immunity and fled the country. <laughs> okay, you big, uh, I want to say snowboarder. <laughs> I literally was like, oh, Olympics, I can talk about this. And then you just started talking about in general winter sports. And I was like, winter sports, Google. <laughs> like, Are you a summer cat? Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm an indoor cat. She and was sunbathing a few minutes ago when we had Yeah, I like lunch. standing in the sun, but like a lizard, mm -hmm. like so fully clothed, just absorbing the radiation. She was sunning herself. But not like tanning. <laughs> um, I like for Olympics gymnastics which i think mm. is both seasons so it doesn't matter men's and women's i mean men's is cool because they do the the, the ring the arm stuff the that rings. the women yeah. can do yeah um but what's your favorite do you have like a favorite gymnastic event or like is like the beam like the or balance like, beam to yeah. me is, is yeah because it's like the hardest i think and it just looks i can't nuts. even watch it it Imagine, just makes me sick. I just think every time. time of like just side, like a little off the center, rolling your ankle. When they do those like, like multiple routine, like chain things, and they just go in a straight line, like that thing's only like five, six inches wide, and they're just. There's not a lot of deaths. They're or great. Just, or like a paralyzing situations. So that always makes me feel good. It's <laughs> like you would think there would be a, a lot of uh, news around, like, ah, oh, the seventh. Gym, gymnast. Seventh, yeah, Paralyzed. balance beam Well, when you're today. doing stuff like that, you're <laughs> learning how to fall and like as safe as you can. I mean, like what, in that really famous Olympics where US won gold and it was like that dream team and Dominique Mochiani was on it. Mm -hmm. um, that one girl like broke her ankle Terry doing Strug, the vault. Yeah. Walk us off, you can um, do it. My favorite thing is when a gymnast, a lot of female gymnasts like do a move that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. And then immediately the judges are like, no one is ever allowed to do that again. Yeah. Because oh, it's there's so a, dangerous. Is it Nadia Komenich? Yes. There's, yeah. a, yep. there's a video of her doing the uneven bars in yes. the 70s. She got a perfect 10 and she did something called like the death drop. Yes. Or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch this video. That's it crazy. is absolutely amazing. And she literally got the gold medal and they were like, no one is allowed yep. to do that move. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yep. Not allowed anymore. Yep. Um, but that's, Simone, Simone Biles did it too, I think. Yeah, she she's move. got like a bunch of she's stuff. Bunch like of her yeah. body like defines physics the way that she can like move it. So and that's cool. like just so fun to watch. She's so My cool. sister was a gymnast and balance beam was what? her. What? Yeah. I mean, she, she was good, but she was not like, she was like good and, and then she, she, she dropped out of high school. Uh, she would, balance beam was her kind of, was her thing. <laughs> and she... She did. She like misjudged the length of it or something. I, I actually oh, wasn't God. there. My mom said she like was like did her like did a string of things and then just face planted oh. on the ground. Oh, oh. the coach didn't 
push the mat. They didn't do the thing where oh, they the competition. save it. Oh, uh, well, they're still supposed to do it. I don't know. I don't think that's how that works for the balance. Not I don't think that they Not anticipate Jersey. you Not overshooting Jersey. it. <laughs> she they was, just do a balance people over cement. <laughs> in I Jersey. also used to be a gymnast. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> she, I would roll my ankle walking across the mat. So uh, <laughs> I had to quit my dream. I had no interest in ever jo joining her. But when she went to like an in a gymnastics camp, like there was like a training camp you go to. And the cool, I went to see it. We was like when we picked her up. And the coolest thing about it is like for practice, they would have these like pits full of mm -hmm. styrofoam yeah. cubes. And so you could like dismount uh, yeah. into the, and Safely. I was like, I just want to get up on it and just like diving board, like into the pool, like into the pit. Oh yeah. They did not allow me to do that. Yeah. That's, that's a shame. You know, now you can just pay to go to those places. Yes. Sam takes the kids there all the time. I mean, I think they, we paid to send her to that camp. I don't think it'd feel yeah, good to do it in my current aged body, jumping Probably into not. a foam pit and then just being <laughs> stuck there. It's not like water. You can't swim out of yeah. it. <laughs> it can you can I jumped into a it, foam, foam pit. <laughs> There'd be a lot of like entertaining content and me <laughs> watching me get out of the foam pit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It would be struggle. very amusing. <laughs> I don't even want to kneal down. <laughs> <laughs> kneel down and just pits. your knees crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kneel down. Did you, uh, did you do it in college or did you? Well, when I was like very young, like elementary school. And then actually in college, I took an ice skating class as my gym class. That's so And I was whoa, really good dodge. at it. I was really good at it actually. <laughs> Why'd you stop? Because I was like, I had the four credits that I needed or whatever. So I stopped doing it. Wow. Wow. Do you guys want to hear something very funny? Mm -hmm. No. In, in high school. All right. I did the plays and the musicals. I was like involved in theater. I also did track and field. But for my senior year, I thought it would be funny to, I called it auditioning for the varsity cheerleading team. So I did that and I made it onto the team. Oh no. You did it ironically? Is that <laughs> yes, what you're saying? I did it ironically. Because <laughs> cheerleaders are stupid. Aren't there movies <laughs> no, about this? That's what, is that what you're saying? That's no, what I heard. Because I wasn't interested in actually being on the team, but then the, <laughs> I was friends with all the girls and they were very nice and they were like, you have to do it. And I was like, okay. So then I did it. <laughs> you're perfect at everything else. <laughs> you really should do it. No, no but I, I did it. I went to cheer camp. Like it's a camp you go to before the school oh, year begins. Yeah, you know. go to like a sleepaway camp and like all all you do is cheer. You have like a spirit stick that you like. It was like a cult. It was horrifying. But um, yeah, I did like tumbling. I was a back spotter. We were very into like stunts, our cheer team in high school. So we didn't, re we did dance, but not as much. We did a lot of like throwing and like catching and back handsprings. And then I got kicked in the face and broke my nose. Oh, and they I threw you off the team? quit the team. Was and they, it part of a stunt or someone yeah. was pissed was, at you? No. I was a back curb. I was a back spotter. <laughs> <laughs> Bite the curb. <laughs> oh my God, they take me. Last time you flip so poorly. <laughs> take me to the parking oh. lot. I don't think, by the way, when you bite the curb, I don't think it's your nose that breaks. Yeah. <laughs> that was afterwards. Sniff the curb. Someone <laughs> saved her at the last minute. But last I was a back spot. you embarrass me. So like you get hit the most. You're right there. You're supposed to catch them. You're like the one who catches the girl so they don't hit their heads. And she, we were doing some sort of like spin move and she kicked me in the face. <laughs> That's so funny. And I immediately started crying. And then I was like, I'm quitting. I can't lose this. Did you this. scream? Like I quit while crying? No, no. Nose? I politely went I to quit. It's like, <laughs> she doesn't even want to be here. I make her the back spotter. I had <laughs> surgery. I did surgery. I had septoplasty. I had oh, to like, wow. they had to fix my septum. And the Ugh. girls were like, you can't quit. I'm like, look at my face. What do you mean I can't quit? <laughs> and that's why cheerleading is an intense sport. It's very intense. It's actually very intense. a sport sport. Yeah. That's true. Though, how many of your cool, cool Brooklyn friends know about this secret from your past? All of them now. <laughs> they all watch the show. They I all assume. watch the show. I assume the show. they support me in everything I Is do. it possible you just got a nose job in high school and this was the elaborate story you told to cover it? No. Sydney. Sydney. It's okay. Does this nose look like I got or rhino? <laughs> if I could afford a nose job, I would still get one to this day. I think everybody wants a nose job. I want no nose job. No. Good, you want no? a nose job? Odeo dode and no nose job. Odeo <laughs> dode no nose job. Are you buckwheat? What was that? Little digital, no, it's digital underground. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. It's a great song. You ever been punched in the face? Uh, yes. Like, boom. In yes. the nose. In the yes. face. Anybody else been punched in the face? You Matthew, Joe. I figured you've been punched or in the King. face. <laughs> I've been punched in the face. Oh no, I have been punched in the face. Punched in the face by like oh, on the street, not like a tournament. Not on the street. Okay. No. On the I street. Mean, I've been like, punched not in like the walking face. down the street. Playground. No. Yeah, no, but 
So everyone except have Sydney you? and I have been punched in the face. I, been punched in the face. I did like martial oh, arts. I just I, said I was kicked in the face. Does my not count? Not I on, said the punch. on the street. I took a baseball the face. Wasn't on the street. Wait, all right, but who punched you? Friend of mine. You want to talk about it? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? We're going to do a fight. This recently? Were you no. correcting his grammar? Did you no. punch him back? How old were you? Yeah, like middle school. You punched him back? We were fighting. Who won? Oh. Nobody. Uh, <laughs> Nobody wins uh, those fights. Okay. <laughs> but he landed He landed a good blow and you dropped like a sack of gabagool? No, I... <laughs> I don't. Remember, I don't remember any any sack dropping, but there was. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I remember it was like a tussle, and then we were just like, and then we were, like, we were angry, and then we were hitting each other, and I got hit in the face. Uh, but, that, but it was that wasn't as bad as like I took the baseball in the face. That one hurt. Yeah, I bet. Uh, who punched you? Uh, same same situation. Middle school scuffle. Middle, it wasn't a friend. It was like a real asshole piece of shit. Uh, a little older than me. Yeah, just jacked me up. Wow. Did your dad, uh, was he mad at you for not winning? For being game? pathetic? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, you he beat me later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all wrapped it up. <laughs> Took uh, you to church to go to confession. <laughs> 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 no, no, it was just a fight. Just a fist fight. Yeah. Big old fist. It rocked in the face and it hurt. Same it hurt skin? Was bad. it a middle school? Actually, no, it was elementary school. I actually got kicked in the stomach and then, but I did get smacked in the face in a different incident. I was, we're playing capture the flag and this like really nerdy the one kid in the school nerdier than me i was guarding the flag and he stole the flag and so everybody's making fun of me it says i can't you be believe you let redacted steal the flag and i was just like oh man it's so humiliated and so i'm regarding it again i was like i'm not letting that happen again and he went for it again and i could see the look in his eyes he was all confident he was just like, cocky he's gonna do it again so i moved to dodge him and he slammed his forehead right into the bridge of my nose oh like, blood spraying oh. everywhere God. Getting hit in the nose is Did you, so painful. Bad, yeah. Wait, you're leaving out the, the end of that story, Skid. Did you maintain control of the flag? I Yeah, I did, because oh. he fell backwards, because I, I knocked him uh, <laughs> knocked him back with the bridge of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Unable to complete his mission to grab the flag. <laughs> Kate, who, where did, who hit you in the face? Oh, no, just like in kickboxing oh, when we're okay. sparring. But I did punch someone in the face once. Really? And yeah. Like after um, a couple of cocktails? No, a friend was just like, I've never been punched in the face before. I kind of want to know what it feels like. And I was like, I'll punch you in the face. Wow. And I well, punched okay, him sorry. in the face twice. Was this after a few cocktails or <laughs> like no? Like boom, did you feel that? Boom, no, came back okay. in the <laughs> It was outside of a show. Was the first time not enough? Yeah, he was like, I don't know about that one. And I was like, I can try to do it harder. So then I did it again. Ugh. And his girlfriend's like, can you please stop punching my Just boyfriend in the face? <laughs> I don't care what he says. Stop hitting him. Did it hurt your hand? No. I don't think I knew how to punch then. Mm. Well, yeah. Oh, you do now. Yes. I'll tell you. <laughs> we should all have a New Year's resolution to punch somebody in the face. Punch no, each other. Should. Or not. Yes. No. Or to not punch someone in the face. Uh, there we go. The, yes. The opposite of what you said. Well. <laughs> we'll talk about it during this quick break. <laughs> We're still undecided. <laughs> uh, it was like three for punching, uh, three for no punching. So, it's, well, you're the only one who hasn't been punched in the face. Would you volunteer to let us all punch you in the face? No, but I think I'd like to sock somebody, not like uh, <laughs> that doesn't deserve it, like someone that like really deserves it, uh, or Hitler. someone who steps to me. <laughs> steps to you. Steps to you. <laughs> steps to you. You're like, Somebody's what did you say to me? And let them throw the first punch, and then wham, you're down. <laughs> right in the bridge of the nose. You're you push like their you, nose bone into their brain. That's how they die. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that you glide over taking that first punch as if you and your 40 year old body wouldn't be like, oh. Yeah, yeah I'd probably crumple <laughs> uh, after the first one. I don't know. I think I, I, you never know if you have a strong chin until you get hit in the face. Mm -hmm. I think I might have a strong chin. You might. Weak knee. I think they would fracture my orbital socket immediately and I would have to go to the hospital. Yeah, but you, it's fight or flight. Like you can, you can crumple yeah, the ground. Yeah, I would like fly to the hospital yeah. where I need to get surgery. I actually read that's a new like trend now among the youth is hammering where it's they will actually like use a hammer on their jaw to break their jaw to give themselves a stronger jawline. I'm sorry. What? Sorry, is this what? like an I read this today. TikTok man thing? Like no, it's to like, to look like a, a just to get give yourself a more handsome oh, jawline. This is a, this is an incel Chad yeah. thing. It has to be. There's no I way. I don't know. There are bone these things. smashing. It's a TikTok trend. Bone smashing. They hit their do faces with smash? blunt bone objects. Smash. You're not cool if you don't bone. I guess like you also lose the weight. Take. 
when you when you get your jaw wired, then you can't you can yeah, you look, you end up, for a month or whatever. Yeah. You know. oh. That's awful. It is awful. I I don't recommend it. I don't recommend the youth of America. Um, that sounds horrible. They feel the same way about you. I know, that's true. <laughs> no, it's the children who are wrong. Um, yeah, that does sound terrible. They do sell these things that you can chew on that like strengthen and restructure your I've seen jaw. you like, it's like a thing, you like chew it and it builds the muscles. Builds, so you have like a real pronounced jawline. Creepy. Why, why waste time doing that when you can just take a, a ball peen hammer to the face? <laughs> uh, well, Odd. speaking of taking a ball peen hammer to the face... One of you died last week. Who was it? What? I don't know. I forgot. I don't really. We should draw show. straws. <laughs> um, <laughs> Figure out who died. Just a, I don't know why I'm suggesting that. Somebody but. here died. And I'm not saying who. It's just probably somebody at the table. But we should all figure out who it was. We're like, all out here trying to figure out who died. We're all trying to figure out who died. <laughs> Listen, it, it was Sydney's character. <laughs> it was Sydney's character. I'm, with no. my kid. I'm, I'm not interested in this bit. No. It was yeah. And yeah, frankly, you know. I'm I know. Surprised, you <laughs> I'm I know. surprised you showed up. I know, you texted me not to. You yeah. said, don't bother coming back. Well, it was awkward because I called somebody else in and I had to just send them home. I was yeah. just like, just. I passed them in the hallway. Yeah. The yeah. Sydney punched them in the face. <laughs> 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 They're downstairs restructuring their jaws. We speak, but uh, rough way to end the year. I know we're all making jokes, but it was truly so sad. It was yeah, crazy. those tears were real. They were. It is weird, like <laughs> losing a character that early in the campaign, though. It, yeah. It's it's so different than it would be a few levels from now. Like after you've really gotten to know them, it's still emotional, but it's it's not it's not the same thing as if it had happened. It's not like a loss. It's more so like the. I, I think I was saying to Joe. You think about the future of the character, the like possibilities I, I was that are so lost. The potential loss. Excited yeah. for things they could do at later levels, and it's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rebuild the character I had. You know, like that was such a specific character. So you lose that. You lose like the potential of what they were going to be. But you're right. It's like kind of best worst case scenario to tie at level one. <laughs> I wasn't even level yeah. two. Not only level one, like seconds from leveling. Second, oh, second. Yeah. No, like, All yes. you had to do was survive. Literally, like a round from level two. Uh, <laughs> like one round. Like That's one real. breath yeah. from level two. Yeah, no one was closer to level two <laughs> <laughs> than you were when you died. Uh, right at the buzzer. Uh, died right at the, right buzzer. At the right buzzer. buzzer. But, you know, the show must go on. And uh, it will. Troy, who, who was that character, character death brought to us by? I don't know. <laughs> Our sponsors for this show. They're, are they're the ones play, responsible? They are responsible. All right, so if you didn't like that death last week, be sure to thank Demi Plan, <laughs> Foundry VTT, and, and Norse particularly Foundry. Norse Foundry. If there's anyone you're not really that fond of, Norse Foundry for all of your random <laughs> needs. If there's any characters you want to get rid of, Norse Foundry. It was pretty your, random. Yeah. I'll tell you well, that. Let me ask you this, and be honest. Yeah. Was it a Norse Foundry die that you rolled for that one on? Nope, and I should have rolled Norse Foundry. I rolled, like, my lucky die, the die that I always, it always rolls well for me, so. I've seen that lucky die because Sydney sits next to me at Glass Cannon Live, and she's used it multiple times to the point where I've said to you off mic several times, stop using that weight <laughs> die. It's, it's messed up because there's liquid in it, and every time she rolls it, it says 18, 19, or 20. Every time. Not today, Satan. So she picked to roll that one, and it was a natural wow. one, which is just they, wild. The dice giveth and the dice taketh. When you told me your character's name was Lucky, all I could think was like, oh boy, that's, <laughs> that's not good. That's bold. tempting fate. Yep. First Very to go. bold. I thought maybe you'd be so benevolent. You'd be like, well, she is a cat folk. You have nine tries. <laughs> my favorite, it's my favorite animal, but... Uh, yeah, sad. You stink. <laughs> <laughs> Let's... <laughs> Let's open today's session deep within a forest. Ooh, dark. Maybe it's night or maybe just the uh, trees above are making it uh, hard to uh, tell what time of day it is. It's a familiar looking forest as far as forests go. We just kind of like slowly pan across this greenery and wildlife until eventually an enormous arch comes into view. And it's surrounded by half a dozen smaller arches. There's a small group of people 
standing about, people wearing green headdresses that have antlers coming out of them, mm-hmm. perhaps oak stewards. We close in on them, and one of them turns towards us. It's Bolan Nagaso. He looks anxious, perturbed, it's like looking around. It's like, am I the only one that thinks this is getting a bit ridiculous? Why do they have us out here? We're going to get killed by some wild beast before we ever stop anyone from doing something untoward. He just keeps talking. But now we're looking like further back from someone else's perspective who's like in the bushes watching this go down. We just see Bolan complaining. Suddenly his ramblings are interrupted by a loud like boom and one by one all of the gates light up. This person who is in the distance watching just sees the gates come to life and then watches as each of the oak stewards step through. One of them, the one that was just talking, very eagerly jumping through the archway. And then just like that, they're gone. Person watches in fear, waits. The gates are still thrumming. And slowly we follow this figure as it emerges from the brush and follow them as they go all the way up to the gates from the side. And as they turn to face the gates, we climb up their body from behind and see long white flowing hair going down their back. And their body language changes as they turn and look into the archway. We don't see what they see, but they are transfixed. And in that trance-like state, they walk through. We come back to a completely burnt out funeral pyre. There's no body there anymore. The wood is just a couple of blackened branches on the ground. I don't know how they would collect ashes in such a way, but if if they even would. Well, I imagine uh, Zephyr had an urn made, so she's has the ashes on her like belt for now because we figure we can't go. All right. So I imagine that they built something so that they would collect, like funnel her remains into something. Dustbuster. A dustbuster. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Why is this thing? (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, mother. (laughs) It's jammed. It opens up in their face. (laughs) I'm allergic to cats. To my mouth. (laughs) And they just, uh, maybe they... (laughs) They hand... uh, So sacrilegious, so rude. They hand something to you, Zephyr, a little glass bottle with gray within it. Lucky was so strong and powerful and now reduced to this tiny jar. And uh, the ceremony is is over now. I, I, I imagine some of you waited to watch others. Maybe it was too much. And uh, we see a, a messenger or a lower ranking oak steward uh, come over to Lemma and whisper something in her ear. And she looks up at all of you and nods. Um, Pardon me, Brother Raymond. Yes. He's very distracted and uh, really out of sorts. He's just trying to get out of there and smoke some drugs like as soon as possible. Oh, God. <laughs> Brother Remus, I, <laughs> I can tell you are upset. Um, there is uh, someone here that wishes to speak with you and your friends. They are, they are waiting in the, uh, the same room where first we met. Did, did they say who sent them? No. Someone that's... As for us by name? Uh, no, by description. Oh. Okay, and he'll look over at Talitha for a moment. Uh, she's not in this conversation, right? He's just... Uh, she's, she's smoking some drugs. Yeah. Hello, 
Where's my fucking drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Just like all some. <laughs> <What? laughs> <laughs> Funeral. <laughs> um, Talitha. It seems uh, someone is uh, in the in Lemma's uh, office asking for us by description, perhaps sent by. What did they say about us? Um, what did they say about us? There's someone that just wishes to speak with you. What they call us? Them. <laughs> <laughs> I wish to speak with them. Them. <laughs> Do they perhaps mention Dr. Riddleson? No, no. No, it doesn't seem like uh, they even know you. There was no name given or anything. Just one of our assistants uh, said that they are waiting for you in the atrium. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> right. We're good. We can't speak to you. We must go to the quaking the staff. Yeah. We're a little we only have three days. <laughs> We're spent right now. <laughs> this is a very bad it's time. Very emotional I'll, I'll, experience for us. I'll send them on their way. Uh, by the way, somebody said you have drugs? <laughs> Uh, me? I don't no, know I'm what you're out. talking all, about. all out. You holding, Brother Ramius? <laughs> how much, how much money holding, do you have? Brother Ramius. <laughs> holding. Um, uh, let's go find out who this is. Were they armed? I, 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 I do not know. So, so he draws her rapier. <laughs> Brother Ramius draws his book. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the book at him, Ramius. <laughs> 1d3 bludgeoning. <laughs> uh, it's an improvised weapon. You're <laughs> it's it's an improvised weapon. Uh, all right, let's go. Back. Uh, lead the way. All right, so do all of you accompany Brother Ramius? Have you finished gathering yeah. the ashes? Yep. yep. And Buggles was just sort of like sitting cross-legged on the ground by the pyre, just sort of like humming and uh, rocking uh, until you come and interrupt him. It's like, let's go. Like, then he'll get up okay. and follow. But. There is someone asking for us. Let's find out what they want. So Brother Ramius, Talitha, Zephyr, and Buggles leave this scene, effectively leaving Lucky. And uh, Lucky's on no. Zephyr's belt. <laughs> She's always Zephyr. with us. Always with us. Leaving the memory of her body. And in our hearts. Yeah. Sure. And up here. I'll never let go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Let him move on. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's the next episode. It's her funeral. <laughs> <laughs> right at the funeral. I was in denial last episode. Give me a moment. <laughs> the funeral like comes through closed. It's like it's it's time to move. The upstairs are like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good morning. Three days morn. till uh, Literally the end of the world. Three hours. <laughs> Three days till the end of the world. Three days till the end of the world. We still mourning. <laughs> are we doing? Um, time to laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> you walk down. Uh, back into the wicker house and uh, you walk down this long hallway and turn into an atrium and what do you see? You see a such a surprise slight a slight woman nobody would have expected this <laughs> a slight woman maybe five feet tall um, and she is a woman but she looks there's something about her. She has like like a a fox-ish, like mouse-ish, cat-ish sort of like face, her features. Very tiny, you know, nose, these kind of like dark eyes, but this long white hair that it is like v quite long, like down to her butt. Um, so she, she looks human, but with some vaguely- Some, some loop. Lupine, yeah, like lupine features. Features. No, vulpine. Yeah. Vulpine. vulpine, vulpine features. Um, yeah, small, small facial features and these black eyes, um, long, thick hair. She has like this white robe, but she is wearing armor. She has on these like silver, this silver breastplate, um, and these boots. Uh, and she turns around and sees you approach, and then gets down on a knee, and bows. Brother Ramius looks at Talitha, looks at Zephyr. Is this is this her, Brother Ramius? But oh, please, there is no need to kneel. Stand up. Who, who are you? She stands back up to her full feet of five feet. Um, she says, "My name is Asta. You don't know me, 
And I don't know you, but I've seen you, all of you, and I had to meet with you. Asta, I am Brother Ramius of Latria. Delitha Breakwater. She bows as, as you each say your name. Zephyr. Akos. And you say you were watching us. When? Where? He's a little suspicious. Put it down in your journal. <laughs> she, pick, she picks up on this. Make a note for next week's recap. Got it. <laughs> Got it. I understand your suspicion. I have been watching you for quite a while. I saw you in the woods. I saw you- You were alone in the wildwood? Yes, I have, yes. And she smiles, a sort of like sharp toothed smile. I spend most of my time in, in nature, but I, heard you before I saw you, and I heard some sort of fight. I'm sorry that I didn't help you. I should have. You fought with the Oak Stewards. There was a unicorn. You saw this? Again, I should have helped you, but I... I didn't know who you were. I didn't know... And she lowers her voice, sort of looking around. You have passed through. You have entered the gates. Have you not? Brother Amius gets a chill, like, down his back. Yes. <laughs> have you? Yes. I... I thought... Perhaps I was alone. I didn't know there would be so many. Do you know the name uh, Dr. Wilson? Do you know this name? No. He has not heard of her. Zephyr leans in. Not everyone who's been through the gate is a friend. Mmm, I see. Like Zephyr, like when you said that you were watching us, she maybe stands up straighter. Because that's kind of like, you know, why didn't you up. help us? Creepy. We, we like. We or herself friends. almost died three times. And we lost. <laughs> we lost our friend. Yeah, we definitely saw us struggling then. Help. Yeah, yeah but so. Well, she I'm roll she didn't I'm know. Roll perception to see like what's going on. Like what's she did not know at the time. Correct. Then. What our objectives were. Uh, Twenty. Maybe Talitha would know. Maybe that she is not a human. I picked up on that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you want more information? Would you roll a 20? You also see a poison blade <laughs> hidden in her palm that she's pulling out toward you. She's got a blade! Not I even she knew she had it. I signal the blade. Like, Blow her up! <laughs> she's it's got a blade! Oh, oh. Psychic explosion. Her. her head bursts into flames. The secret code word. Blow her up! Let <laughs> um, us never trust others again. <laughs> to the quaking stacks? No. Um, I, uh, so quick I, sex? I guess could I roll an, I obviously I, you recognize you're not human do I could I roll a, a I mean, I, nature I, check I, I would assume maybe Talitha out of everybody being an investigator and sort of understanding and picking up on these things maybe you know she is not a human she you maybe believe she is a kitsune she sort of has these fox like features and you might know that Kitsune can take on the forms of humans. They can sort of like uh, shape, shape, shape changes. Yeah. Walks. I take it. So Tilitha will, will like take this in and say, I take it we are not meeting you in your true form. And she bows again, smiling. It seemed better to approach you like this. Again, I understand your hesitation, but please do not think that I was hiding from you because I didn't want to help. I, I didn't know who you were or what you were capable of. I only know, I only saw another who had entered through the gate and you were fighting 
his people. I didn't understand. I... I was changed when I came out. Who? Who did you see through the gate? Walk through the gate? Oak stewards. But different. They were... They wore masks. They were trying to do something terrible. They didn't have masks. They didn't have masks at the time. (laughs) But later, when you fought them, they did. You are speaking of... The... Olan. Yes. Olan. They said that name. So many months ago. You saw this? Yes. Why? I was in the woods. Do you know of the gates? Had you visited them before? Well, everybody knows of the gates. But no, not in that way. I... I had no idea what was going on. But I... I needed to go through them. Do you understand? Did you return with a mark on your skin? Yes. Where? It's on my neck. Let us see it. And she pulls her long hair up to the side, and you see, clear as day, there is this like large symbol. Did you walk through the same gate that Bolon walked through? I believe so. Well, perhaps we must send another letter to Dr. Riddleson. All right. You've met us. Well, why now? What do you want? Why now? Why do you choose now to reveal yourself? Because you are the only... You are the only people I know who... I've had this experience. I thought... I thought you were traveling together for a reason. I thought... And she, like, gets a little... She, clearly, this is not going how she... She <laughs> thought that you would accept her with open arms. And she she's sort of, like, bows again. I understand. <laughs> it's like, I've been stalking you, and I watched you fight, and I didn't help you. Why? And I watched Trust one me. of you die. She's not great at talking to humans, clearly. Yeah. Uh, she bows again. It was a mistake. Uh, Buggles is... He's been watching her, and he feels like he has a read on her that he trusts and he turns to the others and says she is alone we all felt this way we were all alone once we found each other we shouldn't deny fellowship to one such as us I say we I say we trust her she bows that was very kind of you Buggles very warm indeed. That blade. Can, you, can I see that you're carrying a sword? Oh yeah, she pulls out her katana, slowly. <laughs> no, <it's dark. laughs> she just pulls it out and presents it to you, yes? Can you use it? And she smiles. Of course. She... These are grave times. But perhaps you might wish to accompany us. Buggles is right. We gotta save her in safety in numbers. Yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky that Buckles vouched for you. We'll let you join. We'll let you live. She, she bows. She, I, un- I understand you are perfectly capable of taking care and protecting yourselves. I saw that. But I will offer myself to you to protect you. I'm only searching for answers. I won't be a burden. We are searching for answers as well. But there is a matter, pressing matter. We must get to the library. Would you like to accompany us? We have research to do. We'll catch you up on the way. Yes, I would like that very much. And we we tell her everything. Yeah. So it's as if... Somehow, she's been with us all along. Ah, very good. And you send another raven to uh, yes. Dr. Riddleson. Okay. And I, I we weep. We have found I another weep. gatewalker. I weep for your lost friend. 
Don't talk about her. <laughs> you don't. But rape your your throat. <laughs> Let not her name cross your lips. I don't even know her name. <laughs> She's uh, dead because of you. <laughs> she, you killed her. And it was a fox too. I know. That's why I'm like, is she serious right it's now? You. <laughs> God, this is she the fox? The suspi- that's a great suspicion. That's very funny. Messed yeah. up. It's fu- messed up. Pretty it's fucked messed up. up. Pretty fucked up. Whoever did that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Whatever idea that was. Asta. Was an individual. Asta. Asta. La Vista. Uh, Asta <laughs> is going to oh, no. join up with you as you head to the quaking stacks. Oh, man. This has got to be tough. You just lost your friend. Kind of maybe was dealing with that. Then went through the whole funeral. So all the emotions come back. Now you meet another gatewalker. It's a lot. But if what the Oak Stewards have said is true... As usual, time is of the essence. So you go to the Quaking Stacks. Brother Ramius has been here, um, and uh, so you know this is Seven Arches Grand Library. It's one of the city's tallest and most unique structures. I mentioned before, uh, I don't know if I did, that it, it used to be a spiraling stone tower that like tapered like the, a cone or a seashell. Um, but over time, uh, it's been ruined and the ruins have been taken over by a grove of magical aspen trees. So you arrive, and sure enough, Snailfoot Jones is there, and he's just like stamping a book, putting it back. It's just, oh, oh, hello. Snailfoot. Brother Latria of Ramius, yes? Uh, the other way around, Brother Ramius. Latria brother. <laughs> Ramius. Ramius brother. How is your aunt? My aunt, she died. <laughs> Wasp knuckle died? Oh, no. Yes, no, she was sick for a long time. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Uh, I brought friends Our with me. Our condolences to your, to your uncle. Oh, you've brought friends. I've brought friends this time, Thank yes. you for the condolences. What, what is his name? Bill. Uncle Bill. Married into the family, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yes, Uncle Bill will be all right. He's very handsome and has already started dating. <laughs> She died last week. <laughs> Under suspicious circumstances. Yes. Uh, it seems it is a local custom to move on from death very quickly here. Yes, yes. She took a terrible fall down a staircase, and her head was caved in. What? And already dating. Thank God Bill's okay. <laughs> <laughs> very fortunate that he was old. Not also. Very fortunate that he accident. Didn't also fall down the stairs. He wasn't near her <laughs> when she fell. It's a tragic fell. accident. I'm so sorry. Was he at the pool? Very fortunate that he also happened to be seen yes. elsewhere at the time <laughs> of his death. Yes. yes. So, Bill was not the one that found her with her head caved in. Terrible fall. <laughs> He'll be all right. But what brings you back <laughs> to the quaking stacks? Let's see, you are crying. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I really loved her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I would like to return this. And he ah, hands yes. over the uh, history of the it's wild. It's not wood. due until next week. You are welcome to I've already it. read it. Uh, I wish all of our customers returned books early. You don't know how hard it is to track down people uh, with overdue library fees. I'm very uh, slow. I have a club foot. <laughs> and I have to go all around town uh, trying to collect fees. Oh, well, that that is... That is unacceptable. You give us the names of these people and we will go door to door in the next day and collect each and every one of that these fees. I'm not so doing that. Kind. <laughs> Boom, side quest. <laughs> <laughs> collect the library. The I'd rather initiative. read the books. <laughs> the is, part of, is this what you've been doing? <laughs> no. We, we are library fees. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a huge phone book. Oh, uh, this is last month, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How Most many? of these are within a six mile rate. <laughs> <laughs> Snailfoot, I do. Please, uh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, I do appreciate the book, and I, I didn't see anything in it about uh, the Thin Lands. Is this a concept that you, you've you heard of before or are familiar with at all? Mm, no, no, the Thin Lands. Is that uh, they are rumored city? to be bordering uh, the Wildwood, um, perhaps an extra planar land. Oh, 
this sounds exciting. It sounds mystical, yes, uh, and it was not in the book. The uh, book was more of a naturalist approach, and so I felt that it, it's not surprising uh, that it wasn't in there, but have you ever heard anything uh, of that nature? No, 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 the, the Thin Lands, no. It's a very uh, fun name, though. I'm, I'm writing um, a, a, a bit of a, a, a spy novel at the moment. Uh, as you know, I enjoy a good mystery, and so I've taken up to uh, trying my hand at uh, being an author, and perhaps I will uh, use this, uh, this city uh, as a, a, a location in my book. Talitha is going to take the, the bark rip <clears throat> yes. and slide it across the counter. And oh, you still have the bark rip from before. Well, this is good. With this, you could commune with the library tree. Uh, the tree has knowledge that goes back farther than us all. Uh, you could ask it uh, about the Thin Lands. I say ask. Process is a bit different, um, but the caretaker of the tree is down there. If you show him the Bakrit, uh, you will have the opportunity to, to commune, and the knowledge you seek, you will be pointed in that direction. Well, then we shall do that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'd love to talk to the tree. Oh, look at this little fellow. Hello. Ah, what is your name, sir? Buggles. Buggles. I, I... His eyes are all red. Look at you. Um, what, where, where are you from? I'm from very far away, Dees. Very far away? Yes. Well, good for you. Thank you. Sorry, my friends just died. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I, having just lost someone myself, I know it's horrible. Did they fall down the stairs and have their head caved in? <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's a spree. Um, good, good. <laughs> do you happen to have any books on... Geography, local geography. Oh, yes, there are many books on geography. I don't much care for them, but um, you could. Uh, I could point you in the direction of the geography section. Yeah, oh, I'd like to go take a look if I could. Sure, it's right over there. And he shuffles off in the direction of the G section. G, yes, right there, it's geography. Speaking of G. Oh, hello. Hello, hey. Um, do you have any books about Gorgas? Gorgas, no, but I've heard about these attacks as of late. Horrible, horrible. Perhaps that's what happened to my Aunt Wasp Knuckle. Perhaps a Gorga pushed her down the stairs and then jumped from the top <laughs> with all of its weight and landed directly on her head in such a way that it looked like a hammer had smashed her head in multiple times. Yes, that's clearly what happened. Maybe what your, was your aunt question? was participating in this new trend. <laughs> that people do where they take a hammer and then they just hit themselves in the face? Oh, teenagers and their face hammers. <laughs> <laughs> just a thought. Been well, thinking lots about death lately. Uh, uh, there, uh, there may be some books, uh, I don't know if specifically on Gorgas, but uh, books on uh, creatures from other planes. Uh, that would be near the geography section. Cool, I follow after Buggles. Wait up. Um, any other questions, uh, 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 Brother uh, Ramius? I, I cannot leave my post, uh, but you're welcome to I'm walk. Going out. straight to the tree. Yep. Uh, 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 let me know if you need any help. Is the caretaker of the trees, uh, are they uh, a kind and accepting person, or do we need to, to letter them up with some gift? No, your Barkrit, if you, as long as you have the Barkrit, they will uh, let you commune. All right. Let's go uh, have I ever heard of this before? I mean, Brother Ramius' libraries are almost, uh, they're like churches to him uh, and his people in a way. Has he ever heard of of a library tree, of, of like a uh, almost mystical, <laughs> like tree of knowledge it's like the, housed within the a library? The tree is like the card catalog, it yeah, sounds like. Yeah. Or, is it, or is this like <laughs> Do we decimal tree? unique to this place? It's completely unique. And this goes back to like the old elves that lived here, you think. Wow. Yeah. That's so fascinating. If you've heard about it, you've heard about it in like maybe fairy tales. Mm. Wow. This is incredible. A true tree of knowledge. I just want to get like some, like an atlas of the Riverlands just so I can look for some of these places that we... See one? It's big, bigger than you. Atlas. I'm, I'm out with it. Let's go talk to the tree. I found a book. I find the creepiest book on Gorgas I can find. Yeah. I can also book. go to the tree because I want to see that. Book on shadow plane, on the shadow plane, and 
creatures from the shadow plane. Um, and you go to the tree, and like I said, when you first talk to Snailfoot Jones, it's like behind his desk is just all of these trees that are glowing with some sort of faint magic with one large tree in the center, and they're sitting amongst the ruins of whatever the original building was. So you walk down there, and uh, there is uh, a man standing uh, by the tree, just kind of looking down at the ground. And the tree just goes all the way up into the sky. And you look up, and it's like branches are white, and the sunlight is filtering through and just kind of like leaving sparkles all over the floor. What time of year is it? Uh, it's winter. Oh, it January, is. yeah. It's not There's no leaves on it? No leaves. Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, I am Brother Ramius of Flatria. This is Talitha Breakwater. Uh, we are interested in communing with the tree. Do you have a uh, bark writ? Indeed we do. Your friends to the Oak Stewards. Yes. And I am a devotee of the Keeper. Uh, has the Keeper ever made his presence known in this place? It is quite magical. It is not a uh, being that I am familiar with. Uh, though the gods are welcome here. Uh, have you ever communed with the library tree? No, I have not. I have heard of it in children's tales, but never thought to find one here. Yes, it's all too real. How does it work? Well, your writ gives you passage to commune. You would drink of its sap and sap contains most likely a, a pathway to the knowledge you seek. So while drinking of the sap, you focus on that which you seek answers to. And it sounds rather strange, but the knowledge will be given to you as to where those books may be. Incredible. It sounds like right up Brother brother Ramesses Alley. It's See really the branches good. of the yeah. tree just like go out into the stacks and they're like connected. So it's like, it really is like a Dewey Decimal System. Like you drink the sap and it knows like that's where a book is and that's where a book is. May not give you the exact So answer. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Is there any kind of uh, high associated with the sap? Uh, <laughs> asking for a friend. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah. is, uh, <laughs> it is an experience. Um, I have seen some people, um, in fact, collapse from it, so I do recommend, uh, after drinking of the sap, to sit. It can sometimes be overwhelming, but that really depends on the nature of the information you seek. Do we all need to drink? Um, it depends. Uh, you can, if you have questions or knowledge that you seek. If there's just one thing in particular looking for, maybe one of you could drink. Um, I would suggest with the permission that you have to experience it nonetheless. How many times per day can we drink of the sap? I wouldn't recommend doing it more than once a day. You could, but uh, it can be overwhelming. Are there any like ill health effects to drinking the sap? Uh, to my knowledge, no, unless you have a sap allergy. Mm, okay. Do you have a sap allergy? I don't know. We're going to find out. Yeah. I don't know how to phrase this question like in world, but what is there a mechanical role or check we'd have to do while drinking the sap? Uh, yeah, there's a number of different checks you could uh, roll. And so if you drink of the sap, uh, you can roll, you know, library lore, arcana, nature, or occultism. Uh, those, you could, you could make a case for anything else, but those are kind of the ones here that would make do. And, and you focus on one thing, yeah, like one question. Essentially, yeah. Because we want to know about the Thinlands. We want to know about Kinepo and the Gorgas. We have three, we have three topics we want to mm -hmm. learn about. Yeah, so if you each drink of that mechanically, you can each make a roll. And I think we all should drink. See what you yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the, do we care about the Thinlands farm or are we just going to go there? Well, that's why I was... I got the book mostly was to look at yeah. the, I think we're where it is. Go we're just going to go there. But. Okay. I mean, we should know about it ahead of time if we can. Um, yes. I guess the other question, this is, this is what I find a little bit challenging about having a bunch of knowledge is like Thinlands. Would that be occultism or would that be arcana? Society. Or nature? Or society. 
Or if it's fey, I mean, it would be nature, or it, right? Or is it fey? Like, that's the thing. Yeah. Or is it extra planar? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think arcana, nature, and here's for you. You can actually use, um, whatchamacallit? Pursue a lead? Yes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I can have two pursue a leads active at any given time, and I'm going to have uh, Kinepo and the Thin Lands be my two pursue leads. All right, leads so right when you roll this check, do that and give yourself a plus one. As okay. An investigator. Well, the other thing I can do is I have a little bit. I have a little bit of a uh, of drugs of my own. I have a cognitive mutagen that would basically give me an item bonus to Arcana, crafting, lore, occultism, and society checks for recall knowledge. Is this a re- but? Is this a recall knowledge or? It is kind of, but it's also like you're. It's an investigation. You're investigating. All right. I'll save. I'll save my drugs for later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Out of time. I'll save my drugs for when I. I don't want to mix. Yeah, my beer don't need nobody. Yeah. All yeah. right, so, yeah, so you I'll, can I'll use per- the pursue lead action to, as you get and give yourself a plus one bonus to any of the skill checks that I just mentioned, and then the rest of you just choose which checks you want to do amongst Arcana. Li- I don't think anybody has library lore. Maybe Brother Amius. I don't. Okay. Well, here's a fun thing. I also have an, I have a re- reaction called clue in, so I can share information with a one of my allies, and they get a circumstance bonus to my check. Basically, they get my pursue lead bonus if they're pursuing that same lead. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so, so if, like as you're drinking, yeah. like, cheers, you give them a bonus. Yeah. So maybe I'll take if whoever whoever is taking the one that I'm not of it's of uh, the Thin Lands or Kinepo, I'll give you the I'll clue you in. I'll be like, think about it this way. Um. All right. I would. I think I'll go with nature because I don't. I don't have Arcana. Uh, and I don't have occultism. I think it's just going to be nature for nature. Brother Ramius. And, and he wants to know, uh, I mean, what's that? Uh, the Thin Lands, I guess? I mean, Yeah. The, you can keep it pretty general, I think. Yeah. He's really them. focused on the, on what these Thin Lands are and, and how to find them. Because, you know, what we know or don't know about uh, the, the creature, perhaps if we know at least where to look, we could just find them, right? So... Um, All right, so I'm going to clue you in. So you're going to get a plus one. Well, maybe give it to somebody else because what I'm going to do is my focus spell through his prayer to Grahasta, he's going to do scholarly recollection, which allows him to roll twice on uh, a recall knowledge. And I think it should work in this case because it's like, I mean, he seriously thinks that these people don't realize that this tree is like a manifestation of Grahasta on earth and they just don't realize it, you know? Like this is so incredibly magically like exactly what would be up his alley. So um, I just feel like it's, he, you know, he should get that that boost. Like These it. ignorant pagans have no, exactly what <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing with. They have no idea. Right, they think it's just a, a that library that in front of them care, right now. The caretakers of this tree for millennia don't know what the fuck they're yeah. talking about. Out of my way, rubes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, well, I can, so I can do Arcana. I, that's my best skill. Um, I could also do occultism if I need to, if somebody else. I only really have nature and was going to do something Gorga adjacent. So like I could do Canapo with the Gorgas, but I don't, again, like I'm only good at nature. Why don't you just focus, focus on Gorga? Yeah. Yeah. How's I, your nature? I have nature too. Does anyone have a cult? I have a cult. I, oh, cool. So you do occultism, I'll do arcana. Yeah. And who, who who wants the plus one? I mean, like I guess we could do this. What's your, na- what's your nature? My nature is plus four. Same. So anybody, anybody could have the plus one. I'll give it to Zephyr. Okay. I don't know you yet. <laughs> yeah, that, no, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's okay. You got to earn that plus one. Okay. Right, so like, I'll be like, Zephyr, remember that thing when we were fighting the Gorgas? That... Yeah. That thing. Yeah, that thing. Ugh. All right, I would like to, where is the sap? Yeah. Approach the tree and uh, find a, a place. Uh, you will see it the closer you get to it and you just Put your mouth on the, the tree and drink of her. Is Brother Ramius gonna freak out right now because he gets to like be this close to the tree? L- <laughs> Seriously, like, like a tree, gets, like his a, god, he gets <laughs> a French god, <laughs> you get a French god, and <laughs> French god. <laughs> I hereby invite you to French Just god, and <laughs> also get a little high while doing it, and get high at the same time. <laughs> I would recommend once you feel it enter you. Um, Take a seat uh, in case uh, it is overwhelming. Like a COVID vaccine. Yes. <laughs> and we'll wait, monitor wait, you. 18. Wait 15 minutes. <laughs> we'll monitor you for 15 minutes. Uh, all right, he'll walk up to the tree. Keep a guide in my way. And we'll... Just put your mouth on it. 
<laughs> and yeah. he will French kiss. <laughs> God. In his awkward <laughs> long <laughs> long <laughs> French out with kiss. God. Nothing God. funnier to me than, refer- than using Frenching as a verb. I'm gonna I love Frenching, Frenching as a, a verb. Great verb. <laughs> French God. <laughs> Frenching God. <laughs> The caretaker. It's like, yeah. yeah. Nice. He likes to watch. Is that his he thing? likes to watch. He's like you, inches he away likes from to the watch. Right <laughs> It's like behind a branch. Oh, you missed a little. Watching. <laughs> Dribbling down your chin. Oh. <laughs> All right. Do you guys wait for him to experience it, or do you go find your own? Oh, I'm going to find my own set. All right, so you guys, and it's a huge, I mean, it's huge, huge uh, circumference of this thing. So you can all find different places. Maybe some of you have to scooch down. It's not right at mouth level. And you all drink of this sap. You're just like sucking on the tree, and you feel it enter your body and like fill your extremities. And you become super lightheaded. And we'll be back right after this break. We go into the alcove on the back wall where we just see that chronometer. And the only sound left in the room is that of a ticking clock. feel the sap coursing through your veins and you kind of black out for a second. You you feel like you're reaching for a chair and sitting, but then there's another part of you that feels like you're kind of floating a little bit. It's definitely a euphoric experience like a drug high, um, but you f- feel like in a way you're driving the car and your mind feels wild, wildly open right now to information. It's kind of like an acid trip, but not as uh, frightening. What question do you wish to ask or knowledge do you seek? It's the thin lands. The thin lands. I guess I'll do Kanepo. Kanepo. Gorgas. Gorga. Gorga. Kanepo. Uh, Kanepo. Okay. Uh, roll your checks and let me know what you roll and what you got. Skid, what did you roll? 15. In? Uh, occultism. Occultism, 15, okay. 23 in nature. Okay. 11 in nature. <gasps> no. Wow. Okay. Uh, 21 arcana. 21 arcana. And 23 nature. Nice, guys. Nice. Nature. You... Like each of you start asking these questions in your minds, not even like a specific, where do I find out about Kanipu? You're just like thinking these things and you feel like the tree, almost like synapses, like searching the library for information. And it's pulsating within you. And eventually you come to and you're sitting in the chair. All of you are sitting in like the chairs that surround the tree and you just start walking off in the direction into the stacks and various different places. Um, you don't feel a little bit lost, like you're not. She's walking around crying a little bit because the tree made her feel her feelings and she doesn't know where she's going. <laughs> <laughs> Bad trip. How dare that tree? Bad trip. Uh, bad trip. <laughs> I will say this whole experience takes hours. Whoa. Are we like out of it sitting there for a while? You're out of it for a little while and then you come come to and it's not like you're pointed like to this one book in a way you are but you're pointed to like several different books so all of you start going around the library just taking these books out that you feel like you've been sent to from the library tree and then you sit down at tables and start pouring over them and investigating and trying to figure out what you can learn in a tome of ancient elven lore 
that one of you finds. You, I mean, imagine you're just like reading, 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 trying to find anything. You find a short passage mentioning the defeat and imprisonment of a slender, lurking creature of shadows. If this is a reference to Kanipo, it would suggest the Slim, or something like them, has been around for millennia, as this book is thousands of years old, or at least containing information from thousands of years ago. Brother Ramius, you, at one point, deeper into the night, are looking through a volume of the Pathfinder Chronicles. Oh, cool. And this one is specifically about the first world. And you, like, light up because you see a small footnote regarding the Thin Lands. And the footnote describes a colorless forest located in the shadowy realm of Nighthold, once ruled by the exiled eldest Count Renalk. Wow. And, I mean, it's seven, eight, maybe even nine hours of poring over these books. And that is the information you gain from the Quaking Stacks. Wow. I mean, that's cool. It, it makes a lot of sense, too. Like, you would need the tree because tree is basically- it, it wasn't a book on the Thin Lands, right? It's just one small footnote in an elven chronicle. Yeah, of like one of the other, or 50 books. Pathfinder Chronicle yeah. of other things. The search engine. It's and basically- it's a lot for it to sort through, so it took a lot of like time to query its tree database. It's like a control F for the <laughs> entirety of a library. Yeah. Mm. If you look more into Nighthold, now that you get this information, start cross-referencing it, you know that Nighthold, Nighthold is a realm in the first world ruled by this count, uh, and it is the embodiment uh, uh, of the chaos of both creation and destruction. It's like a dark realm of the first world that embodied uh, the chaos that comes from both of those things. Um, after this count was exiled, um, the entire dimension fell apart. All of its buildings crumbled into ruins and all the inhabitants fought each other. And so it seems like it no longer uh, exists in the form that it once did. Oh, so the Count was ruling it. The Count was And then ruling. he was exiled he from was, Nighthold. And when he, was, when he was exiled, it fell apart. Um, so the Thin Lands, if this footnote is correct, it was a part of that realm. And is there any indication on how to travel to that realm or where in a portal to that realm you start digging in and you see that a passage that says the border of nighthold is marked by the light line capital l which is a series of lanterns that serve as a focus for enchantments and prevents the realm from expanding and it was established when it became clear that the first world would not absorb Nighthold back even when the Count was absent. So it defies the realms of like material plane physics. Hmm. But is, in terms of how to get there, it's unclear. You were looking through that it's book the on the Wildwood and you read about that Hydra that yeah. came upon a gate to the first world. Maybe there was some connection there. You don't see any other mentions of the Hydra. Interesting. Anything. In the Tome of Ancient Elven Lore, was there any description about how this slim creature of slender lurking shadows was defeated and imprisoned? No. No, just like mentions that the, he was defeated. And so then you think like, okay, wait, if he's the one that started the Abnubula curse, did he do it in retaliation for this defeat? If it was the elves, it just get back him. at the elves. Is he getting back at the elves, or is that why he was defeated? Like it was a struggle over that. Is it connected at all? Um, is the count elven? Do we like know anything about the counts? It doesn't have any information on his ancestry. It is like the, the gates are Ayudara, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just like I, I mean, have, we, have we talked about? It's just interesting that this curse would be directed against the people that made the gates. Right, it seems you know? pretty pretty pointed. Right, yeah, this seems personal, I guess. Can we just enter the 
night hold? Like, how do you, I guess that's more of like, a, in this world, like how do you travel between realms? Like, is that a normal thing that people can do? We've all done it, perhaps. Well, that's true. Yeah, like higher. Is it like planes? More like powerful is... people could probably plane walk. Okay. Um, is it a, is it a demi plane or some kind? Speaking of, it's yeah, a I realm. Guess... <laughs> is it a Bigger. realm within the shadow plane? Uh, it's a realm with it. Of the is it one of our other sponsors world. of the first world? What's the f- and what's the first world? That's something I. Don't... Yeah, I actually don't know that as a player. Is there a check I can do that on? Um, the first world is the realm of the Fey. It is an inner sphere. Oh. Um, it is so-called because it's believed to be the god's first draft of a subsequent plane that would later split into the material plane and the shadow plane. There are rumors that there are, you know, sort of holes in the world that one can pass through. Um, but there are, there are also stories of like even very powerful wizards spending their whole lives trying to get to the other side and never achieving it. Hmm. Some is, people are just chosen. Is this like an idea of where fey creatures come from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this all kind of is wrapped up in the uh, origin story of the fey. Okay, interesting. What came first? So maybe, I guess maybe our, so with that, I guess our cause, of, or our, our next step is going to be go talk to this farmer and then go to the hoof farm. it out to the hoof it out to the uh, Finland farms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go to the Finland the horses. farms. Did you find it uh, on your map, Buggles? I was looking for that. Did I did I find the thin land farms? Yeah, so if you found the most recent uh, atlas, like older atlases, you look, nothing, 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 and then you look for like the most recent one, you do see uh, right along uh, near the Timon border a section of the Wildwood uh, that says Thin Lands Farms. Um, so you do know how to get there, and it's a day's journey. So. Well done, Buckles. Die away. I know how to read. Is the uh, <laughs> is the farm of the uh, sorry? What are the names? Pa Mosby. Yes, is Pa Mosby's farm on the way? Um, not really, but you know, you it's kind of a triangle. You could go to the farm, stay there for the night, or camp out, and then go there. You wouldn't want to go there and come back. You'd lose a day. Got it. Uh, just to be clear, where are we in terms of days? Like, did, is this the next day after the encounter? Eight, in the nine hours later, right? Well, it took you two days to get there, right? Okay, so we're multiple days after. Yeah, you're multiple encounter. days uh, ahead. I could go back Funeral and like, figure order. out the exact amount of days. I don't need to. I just want to make sure, like, all his spells are, pr- like, oh, fresh yeah. and everything. And you're all at full, you know, if you weren't. Uh, oh, so I should reset my... Everything. Yeah. Such a job. Yeah. Um, all right, so maybe... Is it night now? What time is it? Yeah, I mean, if you were, like... That's enough for today. We feel like you've got all the information we need. Um, you walk outside and it's dark. It's night. Where are you guys staying? Where were we staying? Were we staying at uh, we're... at uh, Patsy's? No, we didn't stay at Patsy's. We were staying at the Minotaur's Menendez Mansion. Brothers Inn, wasn't there? <laughs> that was, that was another game? That was another game. <laughs> that was a strange game. <laughs> I believe it was... Uh... That was strange game. Was... Minotaur's there, Mansion. There is a Menendez Minotaur's Brothers Mansion. in this Town. We just didn't stay there. It's, say, it's uh, a chain. It's a chain. <laughs> it's a chain. It's, a chain. it's like a Howard Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> what game was that? And now I'm like, you, you, you weren't there. Wait, wait, no, there. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Wait. That was Strange Ale. That was Strange Ale. Yeah. 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 Like, but you weren't there. Yes, I was. Remember? No, you. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> your body was there. Oh, oh your yeah. yeah. character was there. Your body was. Yeah. I was like, I like. It was like a vortex of of all games and settings opened up in my brain, and I was like. When did that joke become reality in our, <laughs> in our, in our, in our fictional narrative? <laughs> uh, so you want to go back to Minotaur's Mansion? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you leave the quaking stacks behind. I imagine you're a little bleary, bleary-eyed, bleary-eyed. Um, that was incredible. Staring at books, yeah, drinking fun. sap. That was useless. You really must do that again. <laughs> this is what you do? <laughs> but, but not always. That, that was a first for me. Mm. I've done that before. It was quite telling. Yes. How did it work mechanically? Were you were there? Was it were you doing individual checks, or were we all kind of working together towards this? Uh, they're they're all individual checks, and uh, it's like the number of successes is how much information you get. Got it. I think we could have gotten more information. Yeah, we. I think we needed a twenty-five or more. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's a number rolled, of different ways you can do it, but I rolled a three, and then I re-rolled for a ten. 
Ugh. Yeah, I rolled low too. So I mean, it's a straight up investigation. This this portion here. Um, I'm so, gonna maintain my leads. Yeah, my pursuit leads on again, Kinepo and the Thinlands. Asta, we are staying at an inn in town. Um, do you have a place to stay within the city? No, but an inn sounds perfect. You're welcome to join us there. You can room with Zephyr. What? What? <laughs> Fine. Yeah, you can room with me. I don't mind sleeping on the floor if you want. No, all... I sleep on the floor. Oh. We can both sleep on the floor. Fine. We can both sleep on the floor. Zephyr, Perfect. not into Asta. <laughs> Asta? I had a bad couple days. Yeah, and the tree not. sent me to the self help section yeah. and I'm not into it. Asta, she got not she fell out of a window. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I almost died. You have a your bunch, own trauma. A bunch of times. As you're walking from the Quaking Stacks to the Minotaur's mansion, it's uh, very quiet here. Asta, I don't know if you've spent much time in Seven Arches. Nope. Uh, certainly, maybe not What's at, that? at night <laughs> walking around. What's that? And I don't know, we're, that's, we're that's Patsy's. Yeah. <laughs> that's that? Patsy's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's Patsy's. <laughs> you are uh, a couple blocks from Minotaur's mansion, and it's very, very quiet. There's no one else walking around. Maybe as you left the stack, you saw a couple people, and then it's like nobody for a while. And up ahead, you have to turn to go onto another street to get to your inn. And there is a like alleyway between two buildings that leads to like another street. And the way the moonlight is coming in, you see a tall, slender figure <gasps> Oh, oh, oh. Casting a long shadow down the alleyway, just staring in your face. <gasps> I feel like one of us sees it first as we walk by, and then we all see it, and we're like, stop dead in our tracks. Do you guys all see that? Do you know them? I see it. It's just one shadow, right? Yeah, just standing there, and you can't make it out. Just standing in the distance, and it's too tall. <laughs> I hate that. It's too tall. <laughs> I have Buggles like uh, presses up against Zephyr's leg. It's like getting, trying to be safe. Asta puts a hand on her sword. Is this a friend or a foe? I think so. Knowledge check. Yeah. Arcana. Sure. A foe, Asta. A foe. Uh, it's a 25 if it's regular. If it is Kinepo or connected to Kinepo or the Thin Lands, it's a 26. Okay. I have natural 19 for nature, so 23. If it helps. Is that a 20 on the GCP die? The, the GCP logo? Yep. Hey. <laughs> That's the, Where was so, that last week? Anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been using the GCP die. Yeah. Yeah. Also a, a North Foundry die. That's, when, yeah. <laughs> That's a 26. 26. All right, so. Really, 21 occultism. Really good rolls. Um, I mean, right now you're seeing something that's backlit by the moon. So it's really just a shadow and it is way too tall and way too thin. So your mind goes to, is this the slim? Mm -hmm. You can't see its features. You're about 40 feet away, but the way it, the street, you're supposed to go this way. It's just staring at you. Talitha is gonna start slowly approaching and on the hilt of her right here. Okay. Probably Ramius will fall in behind and he just starts mumbling like prayers under his breath. Keep it. Oh, wait. Talitha, yes. What did us? Uh, Asta will change shape into her kitsune form. Wow. So she has nine tails and she is like a large, not large, she is like a hu her size, but now a kitsune, like a fox featured face, fully fur. Nine tails. She has nine tails. Can't wait to see this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need two, we're gonna need two, uh, Two portraits. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. She's got three forms, baby. It's, it's coming out Ooh. of your check. She's got three forms. Form. <laughs> <laughs> she can also turn into a fox. So. Uh, all right. So you, I imagine like if you're just walking with her, you guys look and now there's a different creature standing next to you and you slowly approach. No time for that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll deal with that in a moment. But she's got her katana still. Weapons I, are out. Get my bow out, yeah. Say, get ready, Buggles. 
Buckles, you're just silent. Well, once they start moving ahead, the two uh, fools, the two fools, Buggles is going to sort of pry himself away from Zephyr's, the safety of Zephyr's leg and sort of ball up his little fist and start marching after the two of them. You guys walk up to the edge of the alley, trying to make out any features on this thing, but there's just this like- It's just standing there. It's not like in a, not interacting. Standard. I always, I don't know if I've talked about this on the show before. Like I always, I always I used to ask my buddies like, what's scarier? Seeing somebody run into you like, ah, with a knife or just walking down a road and turning and have someone staring at you. Yes, that, that, that's, that's And that's what sure. this is. Like yeah. you're just walking and there's something- just Backlit. Staring, backlit. You're trying to make out the features, but it's like this absence of light, very similar to when you faced the Gorgas and you, get to the edge of the alleyway and the second you step into the alleyway it just like steps to the side and its shadow goes away run after you get to the end of the Teresa. alley seconds later no one there <sighs> brother Ramius comes running up behind you all of his books <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, perception check yeah. looking around mm. perception perception John Perception John, go. Perception. Nat- natural one. That's an eight. Uh, where's my perception? 20. Nothing. Not a trace of anything. You don't even see footsteps. We all saw that, right? I saw it, yes. Was that what we saw in the tree? Perhaps. It's here. He's here. He's watching. It's watching. We're running out of time. Yes. We must rest and go first thing to the farm. First light. At first light. We should keep watch tonight. That's a good idea. You think it's not safe indoors? I don't think anything is safe. That creature lives in the shadows. Wherever a shadow is cast, it could appear. I will keep watch. Thank you, Asta. As will I. I mean, we we can rotate, we can all share. Um... Yeah, we'll we'll go back. Go back to the Minotaur's mansion. You'd already checked out, so you're checking back in. Awkward. Two rooms. <laughs> One for the Yeah, two rooms. Are you with the the lady? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll take the bed since okay. they're both the <laughs> 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 sleeping on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. We have a couple of two bedroom rooms, uh, um anyway, so you guys are sharing a room, you guys are sharing a room. Are you taking turns? Like you'll stay up for a little bit, then Buggles will stay up for a little bit, and then you guys on a rotation? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Or if, like, if we're if we do have a suite with like multiple bedrooms, we can just have one person at a time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, if there are two bedroom options, we'll do yeah, that. we'll okay, take. Okay, you can do that. Um, we still sleep on the floor. I still take the bed. You go to sleep. You take turns keeping watch, and you wake up the next day, oddly quiet all night. You hear other people, other patrons of the the inn walking around, but nothing out of the ordinary. And is the plan to go to Thinland's Farms or to Pom Mosby's farm, the guy that was attacked by a Gorga? That first. Pa Mosby? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pa Mosby. So pa can, or par? Pa. Like Ma and Pa? Yeah. Oh. Pa Mosby. Pa Mosby. It seems like it's a nickname. Isn't there a Port Mosby in Australia? Something? Maybe that's where he's from. Maybe. That's where he's originally from. You uh, get all your stuff, gear up, don your armor, get your weapons ready, spend time focusing on your spells for the day, and you open the door to your room to go to the hallway. And on the ground, right outside the door to your room is something carved onto the floor. Oh my God. It looks like a halfway between a five pointed star and like an elongated stick figure. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, this is creepy as fucking shit. Blair this Witch. fucking, fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> creepy. No fucking Like a way. child's drawing. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, facing uh, private property. You're going to get charged for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to get charged. Seriously. Oh. Did anyone take a picture of the floor before they went to bed? <laughs> I don't have any money. I don't have any gold. I don't have any money. <laughs> oh, God.